Hello everyone and welcome back to Survivor Roleplay and we have been doing a couple of bits and bobs. Main thing is we got the rock picking done, we sold all the rocks, also I sold the line and I got just over two grand for that. And also I've taken a huge gamble and we've leased this planter, it's costing us four and a half grand to lease initially and 1800 on top for every hour however I don't think we're going to have to worry about that too much but I don't think it's going to take an hour to get the work done but yeah I thought just get this one it's bigger should just have enough horsepower it's going to be an interesting thing to test hopefully we can be able to do some work with it um, yeah, I'm not going to play for loads in this, so, um, yeah, don't really see the point, I'd rather just go ahead and put the fertilizer on, on top after we've done it. That's just me, but, so yeah, we're going to do corn. And, thought about it, and pretty much the best crops to do is, oats, oats tend to grow a lot faster than the other crops, and corn, but for these fields here, what well, we've done, soybeans in. Plus the new field extension, we did. That's all going to be corn, and we're going to get some corn maize by using the John Deere. I think it was 3795, something like that. 3765. 29 grand. Worst case scenario, if you have to lease it, that's fine by me. If we don't have to lease it, but anyways, we've got some bags of seed over here so should be fine at chosen the way really but yeah a bit of a tight turn circle so just go and back this up but also what we need to get done today is the mowing as well but I'm thinking should we prioritize the moon first or the planting? I think we'll do the planting first. So let's go and detach you. Because, yes, with the sides now, we could store it somewhere for now. Depending on how much we're getting. Then we can just sell a buckload of silage in the new year. Potentially. If you look at the prices. For silage, where is that standing at the moment? 171 per foul. So, that, suppose at the moment it's actually not too bad price wise. So, that's going to be ready to sell in November. So, you know what? I'm just going to sell it actually. Might as well. It's got to unfold this. There we go, and we are planting corn. Just have a 11 miles an hour working speed, so hopefully we should be able to pull this. Okay, we're not at the full working speed of 11 miles an hour. And it's struggling for traction a little bit. I as well as just finding that right gear as well. Whether or not a weight will help or make it worse, I do not know. I think it's fine on certain parts. I think when we get to the more bumpier section of the fields, that's when we're going to see it struggling quite a bit here. But for now, I am happy. I'm sure also, what we'll do whilst we're over here, we'll get this bit landscaped. So, say we want. Paint, we want dirt. So, yeah, pretty much just like it's just a section of dirt there. Like so. There we go. So, we don't have to worry about destroying crops or anything. Oh, yeah. That's quite a bit of a bump there. That's going to be interesting to see if we can actually be able to plant that. I think 
if we went around a bit perhaps, but as well as John Deere is a bit warm, but not that warm. Just gonna try to put a weight on. Don't think we've got any light weights, just the 2.3 ton weights. But we're gonna just slow it down even more. Well, we'll give it a shot. If it slows us down further, then we'll just go and stick with what we've got. But I think, yeah, in the future, we do need a more powerful tractor. And there is a potential tractor we could get in the future. If it comes up on the second hand market, then we'll definitely go for it. Has it popped up yet? Nope, nothing new's popped up. I think it's under medium tractors. There we go, this is what we're looking for. The Case Traction King Series, 70 grand, brand new. If that comes up second hand, that's 35 grand. And it's got it's got front weights and that. Doesn't have a front rear option. So you've got 210, 212, 243, and then 300. So 15 grand difference. So, but yeah, even at 210, if we get just the basic one, then that's more power than this, and potentially we could put wire tires. Actually, if we put like, doors on this, perhaps we wouldn't have as much of an issue because obviously it'll provide better traction and it'll definitely be a noticeable difference. But don't think we can really justify the cost at the moment because we're, I don't know, we're just spending money here and there. I really do need to consider. Ooh, it was actually improved, actually. So the weight actually has helped, I think. Maybe. So yeah, it seems to work quite well. See how it does over here, this little hilly section here. Keep it straight. Okay, it's touching 10 and 11 on occasions. And those missed bits over here, that's just because of the unevenness of the terrain. Perhaps we'll have to go on a 90 degree angle to get that done. I think if we have to go over bits again, then I do not mind doing that. Obviously not all the fields have been properly rock picked. So obviously it does leave a core of a state, but we've only rock picked bits that had the rocks, not the field itself. Reason for being is just time now. No point putting wear on equipment for something I'm not gonna get benefits off, or in this case rock, so But yeah, core, this is a bit of a gamble. It's gonna take six months I think to fully grow and germinate, so that's gonna be November, December, January, February, March, April and get, be able to harvest this, so yeah, hopefully we should be fine till then. And hopefully come by April for sure we'll have our second plot of land. Passing if we do it then I know my money we're gonna get from this corn maze silage it's gonna be worth it. I am adamant it is gonna be do a bit of research, spoken to a few locals and that and on the internet forums and corn silage or maize silage is the best it yields you the most profit per hectare but obviously it's just scale wise because 2.4 meter forage harvester ahead of a trader it's going to take a while to harvest because remember our header for our class is 5 meters I think if I recall yeah, 5.1 meter or so. It's going to take twice as long, but yeah, I'm willing to do the hard work now. I do think if I do sugar beets, because that, that's also quite profitable in that. I think sugar beets is the most profitable crop wise to do. That actually you use what you're basically harvesting, not say use corn to make silage, but it's just scaling at the moment, that's the thing. We have somewhere between what the two options were, the, the mini beat harvester and the trailed one, then perhaps, yeah, we'll go for it.
Plus one's a horse or it is 185 horsepower carbon, that's 10 more than this, so if we go down that route, it's just going to take a while, or not going to pull it. I think we'll still be able to pull it, but it's not going to optimize the maximum working speed available. Plus why we got to do the move the top separately in that, so yeah. Let's just try to balance bugs in that in terms of what could we can and can't do. But yeah, this planter is actually working out quite well. A bit difficult turning because I've just got a lot of weight at the front and back. But again, little things like that I can live with. I can work around that. It's still doable. So but it takes me an extra 5, 10, 15 hour. Then yeah. So be it. But yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll continue on. Get us all done. And then we'll get the motor set up out and ready. And we'll start doing some normal signage. Alrighty then, that did not take too long. That is all of the corn planted. And um, we've got a grass here that is going to be ready to a uh, mow. We'll do that today. Then after we'll pick it up, get into the bunk side clamp, get covered silage, and yeah, I'm just hoping we get enough money for it like, to afford all the things we need. Main thing being is the new field. That's going to be my first priority, I think. However, if something else pops up in the used market, something like, I don't know, a mulcher or roller, like say 30, 40, well, at least 35% off, then I'll go ahead and buy it. But, anyways, we've been a little bit busy. And as you can see, we've got a new item. We've got a jet washer just over here. Buying all these bags, and yeah, so what we're going to do here just get us all washed up and just see that dirt instantly is going away. A lot better than the air compressor that we had, if I say so myself. <laughs> yeah, so, just look at that, it's like, already it's like pristine white, or rust wash John Deere. Make sure we get all of it all nice and clean. Obviously it's going to get dirty again within the next 10 minutes of us using it, but still, at least it's clean for now, and then once we're all done, we'll just go ahead and clean it once more. But yeah, so, make sure we've got everything, all the little nooks and crannies, there we go. All these only has a certain range, as you can probably tell. Now whilst we're here, we'll also wash the trailer, obviously we're going to be using this tomorrow for collecting the wheat. And I think the plan is if we get a worker down, I think, I don't think there's anyone around this Derek is going to help us. Which I don't know if he would or won't, depending on what how he is with the sawmill, how busy he is around this time of the year. Because <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. But yeah, cause just make sure all the little nooks and crannies while we're here, just... Oop, try to jump out of here. Come on. There we go. <laughs> we are out of here. But yeah, I've got barrels of diesel over there. I think we'll get some more soon, but... Ideally, we couldn't have like a proper fuel station around to load in the barrels at a time. Just have a little pump in that. Um, even if we need to bring the barrels on to top it up, that's fine by me. But yeah, so I'm thinking like, if I had to guess how much we're going to get from all this silage and that, I'll say about 160,000 litres or so. 
but also tomorrow it's best to sell the chickens I'm thinking if we go and get that um, log for it because it's got a little blades on the lower end and uh, hopefully we can pick all these up so so one two three something like five packs we've got already and we'll get hopefully another one or two overnight if we can then that's what not sure how much eggs are going for at the moment we can have a little look in sec but yeah just to confirm so yeah we've got our corns growing wheat is going to be ready tomorrow I thought it was going to be done ready a lot earlier but I just mistaken the crop growth times in the crop calendar it's not like as it was in in the past and that where some people were able to grow crop very quickly by using some I know like GMO seeds and that which improves the crop growth time for us we're sinking to the, your typical normal seeds so it takes about six months or so for it to grow but seeing with the coordinate of the whole size situation I know it takes about six months or so to fully grow however I think we can still forage it with a forage harvest so after four months I think not sure if it's three four or five months but it's like in that early it's not ready to harvest day it's still growing however with the, the forage harvester we don't need it for obviously corn itself we don't need the crop to produce cereal now or whatever we can just use when it's grow at a certain point it's still useful to make chaff in that I think it's when it's like halfway through its growth cycle like after yeah say about three months it's ready to harvest so potentially we could looking at getting one done but anyways what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue on the mowing you've all seen this before so I'm not going to baffle on with here showing you all this again and I'll bring you folks back once we're done here with all the mowing oh that's a little stunt there gotta be careful of those <laughs> and here we go we are now picking up all the grass to make some chaff and yes, you sure it didn't take too long to get us all mowed and wind road and I've already missed bits, so it's going well to start off with, but yeah, once we get this done, hopefully we don't have to do silage like forever now. That's not gonna be the plan of thinking. Especially once we get that new plot of land, then we can pretty much double where we're at in the moment. Thinking yeah, something like perhaps someone with trees like twenty seven some bits again but yeah if you sort of look so I'm thinking perhaps 27 it's got a few trees perhaps something like 35 perhaps that's got quite a bit of trees and we can make some bank of that but again it's like this is a terrain that as well because I want to or not want it all to be fields, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be like one massive field. For us, that's not going to be realistic. I think the best thing to do is like split up to like little four or five fields. Or even, I said that's three or even two fields. No, I don't think two fields, I think three is perhaps the ideal then we could do different crops than that. And even though we're planting corn, or that is going to be for silage, that's the thing, so. But yeah, we could sort. Come on, little John Deere. Come on. That's why this little John Deere does struggle at certain parts, but it gets the job done. Of course, if we can get the case traction king, then perhaps we can trade this for that, or even just a case of simply keep two tractors on the farm. I do want to have two tractors, and we can always have one that pops around and one that can have a worker, perhaps. Of course, we need workers if the town is growing. At the moment, it's not regrown really too much. We've all got is a little market area and a, cell, a lumber mill, so not regrown really much at the moment. Oh, John Deere is really struggling with this. Come on, little John Deere. I think it's just going uphill, it struggles, but once we get some more flatter lands, then we will have no issues whatsoever. But we've still got some silage additives from last time, so I'm not too worried about running out of silage additives. 
think there's still some kept out of Farmer's Bees Market, but now we're going down the hill and we're going to get maximum speed. Okay, so be careful here, don't make sure you don't run over the wheat. Oh, that is scraping it. How is that to get deleted? I do not know. But as well, when we get a new plot, let's say we get 27. One thing we definitely need to do is put a road in here. So I'm thinking, go out here. This is quite flat. So I'm thinking, like, where we are at the moment with John Deere. Sort of just curve this around. I mean, like grass fields wise, we'll perhaps get used to a little section here as grass field, perhaps, but yeah, again, it's just don't know really. We'll just go and see how it is. So, yeah, we're gonna get our first full load here in the moment. And this is definitely an upgrade from what we had when we first started this series. That little one that took countless, I think it's like 11 loads we had to do. But with this, all we have to do is like make, I don't know, like five of those at most. Yeah, I think, was it 160,000 years we got last time? Not too sure. Oh, in those stumps, which definitely need removing, but I have my lot priorities elsewhere. So we'll go and simply unload. Slowly creep forward. The last thing we want is for this to spill out, so we need to be careful of that as well. I think when we go around next side, we'll come at the other direction. Just so it sort of spreads it out, and once we get that second load in, we can start compacting it with the weights. That's why we could put duels on this and that will help with compaction, having more of like weight spread across the pile, that means it gets better compaction, but I think yeah, not gonna do like, any twins yet. Actually, how much are twins? Well, we could go ahead and just repair this and refuel it whilst we're here, but it is struggling. Don't think performance wise is gonna affect it too much, but you never know. I just wanna get these diesel barrels. We'll go around in a sec. One and a half grand. Last thing we've used this down here so much and yeah, just the cost of wear is just absolutely extraordinary. Perhaps we can, perhaps, yeah, we'll speak to like Farm Willy B, see if he can offer us like a discount in that. Or at least get in contact with someone and perhaps get reimbursed by the local government, perhaps. But, yeah, it's a bit, a bit peculiar if that is. But, anywho, we are going to get to on with this. This should not take us too long. Really long part is just the compaction itself. And then picking all the spill ends up, putting them back into the silo and that, and then level now again. So yeah, I'm gonna continue on this, get us done. Hopefully we get us done by I don't know half two, three o'clock. Then if that's the case then I'm gonna spend all day tomorrow getting this un unloaded. But if it is like a 24 hours to ferment, then that gives us the morning and early afternoon to do the wheat. Get the shore picked up as well with this, so yeah. We're gonna get this done, and I'll see you folks in a short moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
you down, we'll just go ahead now and get us all compacted. And once again, we've got just a shade under 160,000 litres. So if we have a look over here, 159,700, but some of it has to fill out, of course, at the end here. And then as well as a couple of bits over here, Nat. Not sure if this part's got chaff, but yeah, this bit here has got chaff in that, so. Of course, some of it has seeped out to the sides. What about over here? None that I can see off, but worst case scenario, we should go ahead and get us all leveled up later on. So I was thinking, I'm not sure, should we get the front loader and try to get it all leveled up first, or should we just go ahead and compact it first? So if I could let's say try to get this like middle heap here all sorted, then that'd be good. So I'll try to say to the right, because if it seeps on to our left, there's a chance it could go in or near the chicken coop. Then all that means it'd be sort of near impossible to extract. But if it seeps to the right hand side, then worst case scenario we could just go ahead, pick it up with a front loader, dump it back in, and get it all compacted again. But yeah, I still think this is perhaps the best route to go down rather than doing bells and that. I think yes, bells could be easier, but it's just the extra steps involved rather than this. It's just simply a case of just mowing it, wind rowing it, picking it up, and dubs it in and then compacting it. And with the conveyor belt system we've got in place, it does not take too long realistically. That's the thing, if we ever had enough money, we can get two conveyor systems and then we can pretty much do it double the speed, but at the moment, there's no real point spending like 40 grand on that. Because obviously, that 40 grand could be spent elsewhere, so we're going to get this up again. So, yeah, I lost about another 100 years or so since we started doing this, but yeah, with the two weights, obviously, this is a 4.5. Six ton in total, two point three tons at front and rear, plus the John Deere, which weighs how much? Yeah, have a look here. John Deere weighs seven tons, so I think John Deere is pretty powerful. It's seven ton little tractor and is able to carry additional four point six tons of just solid dead weight at the front and back of the axles. Well, not the axles are just a in front and behind the axles, you know what I mean? Ooh. Actually, I don't want to get stuck on the sides. So yeah, that's what, 4.6 plus 7, what's that, 11.6 tonnes? So again, it's all compacted, does not take too long, it's just a case of simply going back and forwards. A bit goes out the back there, I'm not too worried about that. So once again, it's like these main little heaps here all picked up in that. Maybe get an extra couple of hundred leaves. If we tickled over into 160, then that'd be good. Then if we set us out, like say 170 or so per thousand litres, then what well, that is in maths terms. But yeah, worst case scenario, we will have enough money to get the new field tomorrow when this is all fermented. Of course, it's approaching 3 o'clock now, so yeah, tomorrow, get the harvesting done. Get it done first thing in the morning. Workers should be here. They said workers going to be here anytime from 6 o'clock onwards, so hopefully it's not too dark then, because obviously we're approaching November. I know it's a very late harvest for the wheat and that, but Actually, as long as we don't get any frost or snow, then we shouldn't have too much of an impact. Actually, if we have snow, then of course we won't be able to harvest. Well, we can still harvest, but I think because obviously snow is water, it gets into the crop, it saturates it. One thing, obviously, it will clog up the combine until it dries up. It could catch on fire potentially. Unless we wash it off or blow it off with an air compressor. But as well, it just affects the quality of the grain, and then while we take it to the cooperative or sell point, then they got charges a drying fee to get it all dried up. Because obviously, with, certain, with all crops, it's got to be within a certain percentage of moisture. If it's too dry, then that's a problem. If it's too wet, that's a problem. 
to it. There we go. Right, like, it's fully compacted. Lost another 100 years there. So yeah, we'll go and get the weights detached. But yeah, tomorrow we'll also sell the eggs as well, so... Just where did I leave the front loader to? Oh, over there. Actually, you know what? We could just leave the real weight on, couldn't we? Then we can use that to compact that last little bit. And then, yeah, I think all we have to do now after this is... Pretty much for today, even. Just fertilize the grass. I think, just put up application of fertilizer on. Then in December, that'll be. Actually, well, actually, will it be ready to mow again? I think it perhaps could be ready to mow in December. It just really depends on whether or not we get snow. Now, if it snows, then I perhaps won't mow. So it may be a case of once we've done the harvest, we may just not be able to do much stuff until the new year. And that. so that's the case then, like February now. But at the end of the day, it all just depends on the weather, see what Mother Nature offers us. That's so we could get a weather station in, but perhaps let's see if we can get something bought in, not bought by us, but more like a little partnership deal. Perhaps since I know John Deere does a little weather station, so since we're using our tractor and that, let's say if we so agree to become a so farmer of only using John Deere equipment, perhaps they can give us a little discounts perhaps in terms with on the weather station I think like weather station is like 10 grand or so if that's the case then we won't be able to afford it for sure but well we can still afford it but again funds are limited at the moment we're not swimming in banking that so anywho I'll go and get this last bit of shaft picked up here Say that. Last bit of chaff picked up. Oh, there we go. I know some of it's come from the side of where it sort of seeps out to the side. And that is a bit of a problem, but of it seeping out, but it's one of the things I can live with, I can adapt, so it's not the end of the world. I can see it seeping out again. And all in all, have we actually gained anything? No, not really. Maybe a hundred years, but... Ugh. I think we'll just get this... We'll try again. And if it doesn't go to 160, then we'll just call it a day. I think it just seeps out to the side massively. So yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll just see on getting this done. And I'll bring folks back once we are done here. Because it's getting a bit ridiculous how it is. There we go. We are now over 160,000 years officially. And that is us fully done. Maybe for perhaps for the year and answers with collecting chaff and that, but I'm gonna cover that. That after meant for approximately a month and that, then we'll come back in November. And then obviously we'll go and collect some of this silage. But yeah, so I'm thinking that's pretty much gonna be it for us today. So we'll have one little look at the price for straw and that. How much does that sell for at the moment? £44 per thousand litres. Best on sale is in December, so we could store some of that somewhere. What about wheat? December, January time, so three forty five per foul. If we can get close to like four, maybe five hundred, so like four fifty. I think four fifty is the more realistic price, I think. Then that'll be me a very chuffed bit. But yeah, so that's gonna be for us today. I think next time we'll quick get it all fertilized and then we'll go and start the harvest tomorrow. It's been a long day's work now and to us the last couple of months have been hard work for us, so we'll get some rest, come back and then yeah, go and get the harvesting done. So we'll switch you over here. Dang it, you're in the way. Perhaps we could try push up the combine. Also, perhaps over the winter we could actually go ahead and start clearing some of this up, like get the road in prepared. But yeah, a lot to do now. 
Oh, actually, we've missed bits as well, chaff. Anyway, so we'll go and pick this up. We can always store this somewhere to decide in that. Then when it comes to our next side session, then we'll just go out back in on top. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. If so, tune into the next one when we get some harvesting done. But for now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.